Did you know that 70% of leaders at some point in their careers experience imposter syndrome? And what that means is that the majority of people that you and I both know and admire sometimes at some point in their careers feel like they don't belong. Well, in today's episode, we're going to explore why this happens, but also how to silence that inner critic and unlock your leadership potential. So stay with us until the end because we're going to share how to turn that self-doubt into high levels of confidence. Grab a pen, a piece of paper and get ready to take and get ready to take some notes because we're going to start right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. On this channel, we leverage my experience going from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your journey of leadership, educational leadership, and all things where you just want to impact the world in a positive way. If this is your first time with us, don't forget, hit the subscribe button, Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest episodes or newest content. Hey, everybody. Welcome in. Welcome to another another episode. Imposter syndrome. So it reminds me of a of a moment in time where I was a new leader. I was a new administrator and I was sitting down with a very, very veteran teacher to do their performance evaluation. And the teacher said the following to me. The teacher said, man, I've been teaching longer than you've been alive. And in the moment, I had to think about something smart and I guess in some ways sassy or somewhat, I don't know, mean spirited to say back to put that teacher in their place. If there is such a thing, not something that I advocate for as a leader with a lot more wisdom and experience. But the point of the story is that when he said that to me in the moment, I didn't think about it, but I did later on. I did later on that night and I did for some days and weeks thereafter. And I started to question in that moment, was I worthy? Did I really deserve to be a leader? And what I what did I really have the skills? Did I really have the knowledge? Did I really have the the capacity? Did I have the gumption to actually be a leader in that organization and in that moment? And but for having good mentors and good networks of people to talk to and to bounce ideas off of, who knows where I may have been? And so what we want to talk about today, and we want to have a just a frank and an honest conversation with us current leaders, veteran leaders, new leaders, aspiring leaders, leading is hard and imposter syndrome is real. And so we just want to talk about some ways to help you, help you navigate that, help you cope with that, help you deal with this, this creeping feeling of I'm not worthy. I'm not, I'm not good enough because make no mistake about it. You are worthy and you are good enough. And with the right support, and with the right guidance and with the right resources, you can and will be a thriving, high quality, highly effective leader. So let's talk about some strategies, some things that you can do to be that much more effective as a leader and to take that to take that imposter syndrome and put it in a box and put it deep, deep, deep in the recesses of your memories and put it put it in that back burner, put it in that, put it in the shelf, put that in the closet behind you and think about how you move forward. And so that's the conversation that I want to have with you. So let's talk about these, these strategies, these tips, these hacks, these realistic protocols and things that you can put in place that will help you be successful. So let's jump right in with the first one. So imposter syndrome creeps into our world in really insidious ways in really like covert ways that we don't realize. It may be past experiences. It may be the way that we were raised, the positionality we took in our family, cultural norms, societal norms, any number of things, gender, age, whatever. All those things are real, 
but they don't have to be your reality. And so the very first thing I want you to think about is just high levels of self-awareness, knowing in your core who you are, what you believe, what your values are, being staunch in the principles that helped you to achieve and get to the position that you're in. Because when we rise to levels of leadership, other people have seen your knowledge, your skills, your expertise, and have elevated you into these positions that we now hold as leaders. Other people saw things in you that maybe you didn't see in yourself. And so it's really important to take stock. And so self-awareness, knowing what your strengths are, what do you do well? What are you naturally talented in? What are you naturally gifted at? When you know your strengths, you can take clear accounting of who you are, what you believe, and what you do well. You can then leverage that. You can then pour into that. You can invest more, more time, more effort, more energy. And so a strategy I want you to think about is do a good job of journaling. Reflect on your strengths. Write things down. Write those wins down. Write those key learnings down. When you know that you did something really well, take some notes around what you did, journal on it, reflect on it, and be very, very self-aware. Because as we write things down, as we chronicle them, as we journal them, they become who we are and they also become a roadmap towards success for us. So the very first thing I want you to think about of how we quiet that imposter syndrome that's in our minds, it's on our shoulder, is to be self-reflective and to be self-aware of who you are and what you're all about. And that's step number one. Now, the second thing I want you to think about, and this is, this is one that's hard because when, when the going gets tough and when the pressure kind of builds and the pressure mounts and you start to really question and wonder whether you really are worthy or not, this is where the second strategy is gonna be important. And that second strategy is all about resilience. Having resilience and the ability to understand that sometimes you will fail, but it's important to fail forward. Sometimes you will make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, it's time to take ownership and be humble and ask for assistance and ask for help. But the ability to be resilient in the face of challenges in the face of failures is the true picture, is the true testament of a leader. I make mistakes all of the time. I make mistake after mistake after mistake, but I learn from it. If I'm not making mistakes, it means I'm not trying. It means I'm not exploring. It means I'm not pushing the envelope to do the best possible job that I can for the community that I serve, for the organization that I lead, and for the work of representing myself and my family well. If I'm not taking risk and taking chances and being resilient and picking myself up and dusting myself off when there's a mistake, leaning on my team and leaning on the people who support me and support my work, this is all a part of being resilient. We cannot be as leaders on an island as we think about this work and as we go about doing this work. So when we think about resilience, think about how you take and you look at a failure or a challenge or an obstacle. And resilience is about being able to rethink and reframe that moment, not as a failure, but as an opportunity. Taking that challenge and that hurdle and reframing it not to be a hurdle that you can't overcome, but it's actually a stair and a step towards the next level of excellence. But resilience is about thinking from a slightly different angle, looking at problems from a slightly different lens. Because as we do that, we learn to reframe, rethink, and when we reframe and we rethink, we create new opportunities and new avenues for success. So be really mindful and be really, really intentional about being resilient and setting up systems and structures for you to be able to do that. And that's going to be your second strategy of dealing with imposter syndrome. Don't let it get you down. It's exactly 
the, the voice in your head is exactly what you need to turn down. And by doing strategies one and two, so thinking about being self-aware and then bringing in resilience are great strategies to combat that. And now we're going to talk about a third strategy that will help you as well. Okay, but before we go into strategy number three of quieting that imposter, quieting that imposter syndrome, share with us in the comments below and tell us what are the types of strategies that you use to quiet the imposter down in your own head? How do you push that back? How do you keep that imposter syndrome and that feeling? How do you keep it at bay? How do you keep it out there on the horizon so it doesn't creep into your ability to lead well and to make good decisions and to push forward with your strategic vision, your strategic initiatives? Share that with us in the comments below because it's going to help us and help our entire community think about how we also can alleviate imposter syndrome in our lives as well. So share that with us in the comments below and let's talk about strategy number three. All right, strategy number three for decreasing imposter syndrome in your life is thinking about how you increase your confidence in decision-making. Now, when we're worried and we're questioning whether we're worthy, whether we're up to this challenge, and when that imposter syndrome is creeping in slowly and surely, we might start to second-guess our decisions. We might start to second-guess our ability to make effective decisions. Don't second guess yourself. You will make bad decisions. Just know that at its outset. Don't worry about making bad decisions. Make sure that as you make decisions, you're using very specific strategies in order to do it. Make sure you're asking enough questions. Make sure you are bringing in the right key players in your organization, making sure that you're armed with the information, the data, the evidence, the, t the statistics, the narrative experiences, making sure you're collecting all of that as a part of your decision-making protocol. Are you asking your critical advisors and stakeholders to, making, to make sure that you have all of the right input and all of the right feedback incorporated into the plan? And when you've done all of that, then make a decision, be bold, be courageous, be clear, and be direct about the decision and why you're making it. Because even a bad decision, when communicated effectively and confidently, a bad decision can sustain. A bad decision will not necessarily be seen as something that is something we can't come back from or that we can't pivot or adjust from. But a decision made with a lack of confidence, a decision that is made with a sense of waffling and uh, that level of indecision will create indecision and create a lack of confidence throughout your organization. So make sure you're armed with all the right information. Make sure you're asking across the organization as many people as possible and then make a bold decision. You have been put in a position as a leader to make the critical decision and then also be accountable for that decision and the justification of it. And potentially the pivot in the new decision where you go through the same exact process. You go through the same exact process over and over and over. After having to navigate things like dealing with the pandemic and dealing with COVID and, and, and keeping people healthy and safe. I had to make tough decision after tough decision after tough decision. And when you have the right protocols in place, when you have the right mindset, again, where you're self-aware and where you're resilient and you have the right systems and structures to make good sound decision-making. Now you're in a good spot. Now you're in a good place to lead. And so let's talk about kind of a concrete strategy when we're incorporating all the things that we've talked about in this episode already. But really what we're talking about is how do we reframe your inner dialogue? We talked about this reframing concept when there's a challenge or there's a hurdle, reframing that to make that not a problem or a challenge, but as a, an opportunity or a chance at something new and different. We'll reframe the same thing in your mind. So reframing that inner dialogue sounds something like, 
in my brain, I'm saying that maybe I'm not worthy of having this particular position or I'm not worthy of leading this organization. Reframe that to say, I have worked hard. I have been educated. I have gotten the training, the credentials, the background and the expertise and knowledge. I absolutely am qualified to be in this role and in this job. We reframe. Reframe your inner dialogue. It creates a level of self-confidence where now you'll project. And now when you go through the concept of self-awareness, resilience, and sound decision-making, you're doing that through the frame of I've already reframed in my own inner dialogue, who I am as a leader, what I believe and what I bring to the table. And now I can run through those checks and balances that bat back imposter syndrome that much better. We want to stay self-aware. We want to stay resilient. These are high quality leadership levers, high level leadership capacities. And as we think about that and we think about leading and leading more effectively, I want you to check out this next video that's uh, going to be right here in the center of the video screen. Check out this video because it's going to help you also increase that leadership capacity and increase that ability. And if you've gotten value out of the episode so far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like the video and share it. Share it with as many people as possible. Our goal is just to add value to this community of leaders and to just grow and develop the skills and the talents and the capacities of so many passionate people who want to serve their communities, serve their schools, serve their organizations. That's the goal. So again, if you want inf information about coaching or mentoring or maybe our weekly newsletter, just check the description below. It's more information and more value kind of packed into that as well. And I want you to think every day, how do you serve others? How do you take care of one another? So until we see you on our next episode, be well. Take care of each other and take care of yourself. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.